everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. We are in a very interesting patterned brown landscape of memory, something that has passed. Today I will be reviewing Solstice Scents or Solstice Scents. The perfume is Manor. It's handwritten. There it is. By the way, um, this is an oil. So, we have a description in the back for the sample. Sample care. Handle vial with clean, dry, oil-free fingers to preserve the handwritten fragrance name. Handwriting may smudge or fade over time if oil or alcohol comes in contact with label. This fragrance is called Manor. Solstice Scents, here's the handwritten name and the website. So, okay, let me delicately try to open this, not spilling the oil all over this shirt. Okay, here's the little applicator. Let's put some oil here. You know, people that um, inhale, oh, well, look at that oil. Look at that oily texture. You know, sometimes I like to try perfumes here uh, on this part of the body because you know how some people that smoke, um, well, that, that don't smoke, some of them, boy, there's a lot of oil. Give me a second. Let me put some here. Uh, they would put tabac here and then they would inhale it, the, in, the tabac inhalers. So um, don't smoke. It's bad for you. But whatever. The, the thing is this, it's for the flavor because they say that apparently here in this area, because of the pulse, you get more of the flavor of, what, of whatever you're, you're consuming. So in this case, I'm going to have to put this upright just for now because I'm scared it's going to leak. I don't think it will. Okay. But uh, so I'm placing it here, this oily consistency. You can see the oil if I block the light off. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Let's read what Solstice Sense has to say about manner. Uh, particularly this type of oily consistency sold in 5 milliliter perfume oil, woody vanilla musk, vanilla, agarwood, and sandalwood. Manor is the scent of a once grand estate, now disheveled forgotten and left exposed to the elements. The faint scent of previous owners and their esteemed guests, exquisitely perfumed ladies, mingling with the intense, rich, and musky scent of smartly dressed gentlemen, meets rich wood floors and heavy wooden doors, long since opened, decaying, bedboard and wainscot topped off with a thin layer of dust. It is very sophisticated and absolutely intoxicating. Manor is a blend of woody vanilla musk coupled with an incredible vanilla and exquisite oud. The scent is sweet and rich due to the vanillas, woody and incensey from the oud blend and a touch of sandalwood. On initial application and cold sniff, the aloe's wood, aloe's wood is a little stronger than it is on the dry down. Manor settles down wonderfully. After hours on the skin, it does smell much sweeter due to the vanillas, though the woody incense element is still detectable. Manor contains natural and synthetic oud. It is unisex. The ingredients read um, oriza sativa rice, bran oil, fragrance, and may include essential oils. So this is a description that the brand gives us. Now, let's see what I, I managed to detect. If I get all that visual uh, that, that they're describing to me, and in particular, um, the cold sniff, which is the initial application. You know, you could smell out already from the closed vial the vanilla. But I have to say, so I thought, okay, this is going to be, it was almost like a cakey vanilla. But applied on the skin, 
it's less of that and more more oud uh definitely more oud um you could say more agar agarwood i'm trying to see what else we have in here i mean the agarwood is an oud but ah, musk you know um hmm something else in there I can't put my finger on it I'm trying to figure out hmm it's a memory of something um, very interesting because you know I always say my reviews we have overdone the oud Oud is everywhere in niche uh, perfumery. Oud is also in mainstream perfumery, wherever a mainstream fragrance brand wishes to kind of launch a, a sort of um, niche style fragrance within their own range. And we know big brands do that. They launch their boutique exclusive per perfumes and fragrances, and a lot of them play with Oud. Not every brand does it, but a lot do. And um, But I have to say here... I'm not overpowered by the oud, which is a good thing. Because it is an oil and we didn't spray it, but we applied it with an applicator, it stays close to the skin. It has a depth, but um, it doesn't project really much. So if I'm moving my hand quick, quickly and kind of trying to just... I get the smell, you know, but to me, it's very, um, I don't really get this, the idea of an abandoned manor or um, of its illustrious guests or interesting people that were in it. I get more uh, a memory of, um, of a sophisticated vanilla type of sweet that has been served for special occasions. It doesn't have to be Christmassy. It can be colder months for sure, but all sorts of occasions. It could be even a vanilla mixed with a pumpkin pie in a sweet way for Thanksgiving, or it could be a really interesting uh, sweet also served for Halloween, or it could be also in summer. It doesn't really have to be only in cold. But because of all the woodsy aspects of it and the uh, resiny touch of the fragrance, it does make me feel like it's more for the colder months, but I can totally see how somebody would wear this also in summer. And because it's a fairly um, straightforward composition, not too many ingredients listed in it, I think it can be interesting to layer this if you wanted to, because as it is now, it's a warm vanilla. There's sandalwood in there as well, but it's a, it's a warm fragrance. Very simple. I think much more simple than what this depiction here with, with the skull shows us with the crystal, the dying roses and feathers. I mean, as beautiful as this uh, sketch or drawing is, uh, it doesn't really... portray what the perfume portrays and this is sometimes you know a lot of these brands have to be careful when they describe their fragrances not to give too much expectation to the wearer not to give too much interpretation of what they want the perfume to be because sometimes that doesn't translate very well from the concept into the actual fragrance now this does not mean that this one is bad i actually really like how it smells up until now but I think you could, to this warmth, which is also a dry warmth, you could add a bit of green if you wanted to. You don't need to. But it would, I think, tickle out facets of this fragrance that would then make me start thinking about a manner. And I'm saying this because I've been in many manners and I've been in many abandoned manners. I'm a big fan of Halloween and I'm a big fan of uh, spooky places. And I love uh, when, in general, when time kind of takes architecture over, 
when people move out of places, even entire abandoned cities, and then how with time grass starts growing over everything and how time literally covers up anything that is left abandoned and then nature takes over. Uh, so, and there's a particular smell, no matter which country I was in when I would enter these abandoned places, there's a, a dusty smell in most of them and dust can have a warm connotation, especially if you're visiting these places and mostly you are visiting them during the day. Uh, the light filters through the boards that have shut the windows or there's just some window or somewhere where the light, some place within the manor where the light does filter through. And you do see, just like in the movies, really, it's quite basic, but you do see the dust particles floating in that, in those rays of light that are cutting through uh, the, the window boards or whatever have you. And that dusty particular type of smell is also leathery and smoky most of the times, but... Most of these places have a certain degree of humidity in them, and there's a certain rotting smell there as well, which is not bad. It's actually quite interesting, especially in places where there's a lot of either rocks or wood. There's a certain green, humid smell, not of fungi, but it's... It's a vetivery type of humid, soily, wet smell that combines with the dusty, dry, ambery rays of light that filter through the, uh, the, the windows or the cracks in the walls or the cracks in the windows. And, and those two combined give a depth of character to the kind of the visions of the past you might get within that manner of what happened, what was going on in that manner and uh, in the past. And you kind of, you're, you're you know, my mind starts fantasizing much quicker that way than if I were to just follow one particular uh, structure of a smell. This one aims more towards, you know, the sandalwood, ag the oud, sandalwood oud um, vanilla, which takes us to the beams of, of warm light and the dust particles filtering through. But I still am missing that wet touch, that humid touch, to really dive into uh, a notion of, um, of an abandoned manor. However, let me smell it again, let's see where we are now with the development. However, it is very pleasant on the skin. It is very, very pleasant. It doesn't, as I said before, give off that annoying oud that a lot of niche perfume houses, fragrance houses want to push on us. It's as if, you know, oud is the new black. It's as if oud is the new niche, you, you know, and it's not. Here they don't go overboard with it, which I'm really appreciative of. I mean, they do mention in their description that part of partially it's synthetic, partially is natural, the, the oud. So I don't know which facet of it I'm smelling out more here, but again, the vanilla keeps caressing it. So the vanilla... The vanilla is strong, and it, it's stronger than the oud, and it keeps kind of covering it up and taming it, which I don't mind, because otherwise the oud would be too powerful for me. Um, hmm. This one could benefit from a bit of fig. <laughs> fig leaf. I think it could benefit if, if they added a bit of fig into it, just to confuse us a bit more, to create a manner in which you're not really aware of the time. Were you, are you a time traveler? Are you entering this manner and you don't really remember what time you're coming from? Or is the... Or are you in your time... But by entering the manor, you've entered a future in which a manor has also been abandoned in the past. Complex to, to follow, complicated to follow maybe my train of thought, but I've been dealing a lot with the concept of time lately, analyzing it, studying it for myself, reading a lot about it, and also just trying to feel time more as a fluid rather than as a concept of something ticking and time being timed. I don't believe in that. Uh, to me, time is a fluid construct, um, like a fragrance. 
in many ways. So you can travel through that time according to which olfactive uh, memory patterns are triggered inside of you through the smell of a fragrance. So in my manner, if we added a bit of fig leaf here, I think in my manner, I would find a relict of sorts. I would find this. This is something that uh, is a very particular relict. Some of you might even know what it is. It's a scary one. And this is a kind of some would be found in a corner somewhere, abandoned. If you know what I'm talking about, great. Otherwise, you missed it. <laughs> and that's the type of manner I'm talking about. Finding these relics from the past, where if we know what we just saw, we can remember the context in which this persona thrived and lived. It could be from one of these manners. We don't know. But the fact that we don't know and the fact that we found a relict makes us want to dig deeper. And this is where I say a perfume to me really wins when it makes me want to dig deeper into it, when it makes me want to keep guessing, when it makes me want to um, understand, when it hints that there is more to it hiding in the crevices and behind some corners than what I would acknowledge as being present in the perfume at first sniff. So let's smell Manor again. You know, as it's slowly drying down, um, I have to say it triggered another thought process in me, and that is what if wearing this and then entering for real while wearing this a manner and having the manner, yeah, I think that's the trick. Having the manner actually, the smell of this abandoned place add something to this smell as well that we're wearing on our skin already. I think that would be really magical. Why am I saying this? Because now it's kind of, as it's settling down, there's a smoky note to it um, that's hinting at something green, but it's not quite there yet. And it's really delicious. And, and the vanilla kind of comes and goes. Um, I didn't need all that vanilla in here, but it's there and I can respect it. Um, it's very pleasant to wear. Very stays very close to the skin. It can be very sensual too. I think if your partner or whoever you wish to spend some quality time together with uh, would like uh, oud mixed with vanilla, because it's a very comfort, it, it's not very chemical at, at all, really. I mean, it's it's resinous and oily, so if you kind of put your nose into it, you know, the, the worst example of a, of a synthetic type of reaction when you put a nose into somebody's armpit that, that have just put on deodorant spray. It, it, it's just, or if you lick that spot, it's just, the tongue just goes numb. But with this, I have the feeling... Um, there's less of that aggressive chemical reaction to it, so that's why it's much more of a pleasant, intimate scent. Uh, I would consider buying it. The, also for the price that they sell the five milliliters for, it's totally fine. Um, but not something that I would wear out and about in the city. This would be something that I would where if I really go to visit some abandoned castle or if I am uh, in the countryside and, I don't know, staying, I'm not saying being in a barn, but, you know, manors usually have, really old manors sometimes would have land surrounding them with a barnyard as well that would be used to prepare, uh, you know, to to get ready for winter food, whatever, throughout the whole year. It would have different little houses surrounding it. So visiting places like that while wearing this can be very, very interesting and definitely worth uh, trying out because um, it does set the tone, you know. It doesn't complete the story, though. It, it, it sets a tone and it sets a mood, and then it's up to you 
to deliver the, the missing pieces of the puzzle. I find it fascinating that sometimes uh, with some fragrances, they don't want to tell you a full story. They want to give you a piece of the puzzle and then you got to go and hunt down the other pieces for yourself if you wish to. If not, you could stay on the basic level. This one is basic in many ways, but don't get fooled because it does stimulate and allow the wearer to bring in uh, their own elements and aspects to the story. And I like that. That is a very giving type of fragrance at the end of the day because if a fragrance doesn't overpower you, it does allow you to add yourself into it. In this case, it might not add, it might not allow yourself to be added into it, but it would definitely allow uh, you to open a door to this manner or this place that you're experiencing or going through or um, on a discovery trip, discovering, discovery trip, that's the right word for it. And then you could add that layer onto this layer. Really cool. Other than that, I mean, you could try to spray a bit of fig leaf essence or oil or mix that together with this to give it more of a green touch. I wouldn't go for vetiver with this one. I would really go more for the fig, particular in manners on the Mediterranean where figs grow all over the place. In the, in the heat of summer, you could have, you have that smell of fig and fig leaves and fig barch. Anyway, it's all in the air surrounding these places. It's a very fascinating element, like a layer on top. Um, so yes, I would recommend it and I would wear this. I like it. I like it quite a bit. Tone down the vanilla a little bit and that, then, and then, and then we're there, you know, but other than that, really cool, great concept. Um, it's a one milliliter perfume sample of a five milliliter oil that you could purchase. I love the fact that it's handwritten, attention to detail, these little two holes here that you could put a sample both here or there. I guess they could give you two samples if they wanted to be generous, <laughs> to give you two milliliter instead of only one. And um, there you have it. And then to be in that manner means also to deal with danger. And here's my last point. For this review that is the element of danger this one does have it and it's the smoky touch in there the vanilla uh, in there kind of tr tends to eliminate the danger but the sm that smoky aspect in there kind of wiggles its way through the vanilla and you sense danger something can happen the manor might just be haunted Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you like this review. If you have, please do thumb it up and let me know what you think about Solstice Scents and in particular Manor if you have tried it. Also, if you haven't already but wish to, consider at least subscribing to my channel here on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter, Super Dacob all spelled together. I'm also on Patreon and I would love to thank all my patrons for pledging and helping me out to see the channel grow. Also, be sure to check out Ask Jacob, my uh, YouTube series where you get to call in live and talk to me and we get to talk about all the topics that you're interested in. You also get to ask me questions. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Until then, never give up on love. Bye.